part two of the DIY series on wiring your workshop. In this video we're going to talk about the load center or the breaker box as it's uh, probably more commonly called. It's got several other names as well but we'll stick to one of these two names for the purpose of this video. So one of the first questions you need to ask yourself is how do you determine the correct one for your application? Well, the first thing you want to do is start with whatever service amperage that you've got coming in to your building. So in the case of, of uh, this particular project that I'm talking about, it's a 200 amp service that comes into the workshop. And so we want to look for a load center or a breaker box, if you will, that uh, is rated for 200 amps. And then the second thing you need to do is estimate how many circuits that you're going to need. And so the 110 circuits require one space in the breaker box and the 220 circuits are going to require two spaces. And a typical box is going to be a 40 space box. So you can kind of go by that to figure out uh, if, if that's going to be big enough or, or not. Now there's scenarios obviously where you may need more than 40 spaces so there's boxes that accept these special breakers so it's it's one it's one space in the breaker box the breaker is looks like a single one space breaker but it's it's actually got two two breakers in it and they're independent of each other they sell these at the big box stores and you can get them they appear to be just as common as the standard breaker boxes are these days so you can get those I think I've got a picture of one here in the upcoming slide that shows fifth I believe it's 54 circuits so you, you can get a lot more than your standard 40 out of them so here's a quick shot of just planning phases so you just the the best thing to do would be to just draw out your your uh, space and and make sure that you've got all your circuits accounted for and then come up with some type of percentage for growth to add on top of that and make sure that you're putting in a box that's got enough electrical uh, breakers that, that you know, it's going to it's going to work for you this is the box I went with just a straight up standard 200 amp breaker box with 41 inch spaces so you can put 40 circuits in it max uh, you can see here it was $144 I actually got it on sale for half of that I have no idea why it was on sale they still sell this particular model at the same store I just walked in one day and before you know I've got a habit of going and I'm sure many of you do too you walk in and just don't have any purpose for being there and you're just looking around and a lot of times I'll just go browse the aisles make sure I'm not missing anything and then I'll turn around and leave well I did that this one particular day and it paid off because I went down the circuit the electrical aisle and I saw this box that I'd already had my uh, eyes on and it was marked half price on some type of clearance and so I obviously snatched it up here's the other version of that uh, of, of a similar box uh, it's a, a 31 inch spaces so I'm going to assume that means that it's not as tall overall so if you've got some type of limiting factor on on uh, uh, say the the wall that you're putting the breaker box in you can only say you, you can only have it a certain height then you could look also at, at one of these panels to, to try to save on on space and, and this is one of the ones that takes that can take these special breakers and you can get up to 54 circuits uh, in this particular one so here is my space prepped uh, almost ready to go to accept the new breaker panel As you'll notice here the the backing basically just consists of I believe it was three two by fours and just stood them up on end and had them uh, screwed together and screwed to the wall 
and then I put a sheet of uh, I believe that's three six or a quarter inch maybe of uh, sheet of plywood over the top of that to give it a nice flat surface and here is the panel put up to that and I believe uh, I may have gotten some some screws in it just to hold it in place and what I didn't show here is uh, before the the uh, hole was cut in the upper left hand corner of the box and that's to accept the two inch rigid conduit where the uh, feeder wires are going to come in so the thing to do is put this panel up there you can uh, take out the knockout on wh wherever you're going to bring in the, the conduit and mark your circle and find the center and then take your hole saw or whatever you're going to use to cut that hole and uh, then you just pull the pull the box off of it and and cut your hole and you can see here that's what I've done now the the hole you see down below there is not a mess up it's actually the uh, the hole for where the conduit came in on the old box that I replaced I had an old bus fuse box that uh, was put in just in the late 60s early 70s and uh, that was the main reason for this project is I wanted to get rid of that thing because number one it because of its age and I didn't want to deal with the 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 fuses and then two uh, it simply didn't have enough uh, bra circuits available in it that uh, uh, I just needed to get rid of it and get get something that uh, would allow me to have more circuits in the in the building. So you can see here, here's uh, I'm pulling the wires in, and uh, then I'll put the box up there after after that. Uh, there's uh, the two two hot wires, which is uh, a 250 kc mil size wire and then the uh, neutral wire is a, is a couple sizes smaller and uh, all three of those are aluminum and you can see here too I don't I don't believe that last picture showed so so you see this extra piece of plywood that's uh, goes down the center there and that that's gonna that's gonna be what I bolt the or screw the uh, box into and that leaves the each side to have a little space between the 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 panel and the the backer board and I'll explain more here in just a second what why I did that so here's the box and it's it's screwed into its final resting spot We've got the rigid conduit uh, run We've got the uh, a nut on on that con on the conduit We've got the wires come in and cut the length and they're bolted down and here's another shot you can see in this picture the if you look closely the, in the center of the picture here that's the that's the neutral wire and you'll probably notice some stuff that's gray oozing out from the bottom of the lug and that is uh, uh, corrosion uh, preventative stuff that that needs to go on aluminum wires so that'll be one of your code requirements is that all connections that uh, are aluminum that you have that anti-corrosive stuff put on there and uh, so that's that's what that is now right beside the neutral wire there you see this screw with a green head on it that screw is the neutral bonding screw and what that does is is when you when that screw is engaged that ties your neutral bus to your ground so you only want to do that in one place in one place only so by default this box comes with that screw disengaged which means that the neutral is not tied to the ground the reason being is most of the time a box like this is going to be typically a secondary panel which would mean that there's another breaker box upstream 
closer to the service entrance than this one so it would the the other one would be considered the primary that and that one would be the one that would have uh, this this uh, bonding screw uh, activated so what that what that basically is 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 uh, so that you you know you're tying your neutral to your ground uh, if you do that in multiple places i.e. have it bonded in, in two separate boxes then what you can create is this this scenario where say you've got a circuit and for whatever reason the neutral wire gets cut and in your secondary box if you've got that screw bonded then you can create a loop there where uh, your your neutral is uh, your your ground wires actually become your neutral at that point because it, so if if your neutral is cut and the, you know, the whole purpose of the neutral is to return uh, the electricity that was not used from your from your circuit well if it doesn't have that neutral to return then it's if that's bonded there's a path via the ground and so if you've got like a metal box or that your that your ground is run to then you basically just potentially energize that that box so if you if you touch it in that scenario then you, you could get electrocuted so you only want that bonding screw activated uh, at your primary breaker box in my scenario I did not have uh, a, a secondary uh, which is typically in a, in a residential setting you'll have your pri your your t primary box is going to be on the outside of the house in, in most cases and that's going to have um, like one big breaker let's say it's a hundred 150 amp and that would be what then feeds inside the house to this main panel and then uh, outside the house the, the, there's could be some other breakers and those are typically like your your 220 to and we're in when we're talking about a house anyway uh, the 220s would be like your dryer and your stove and air conditioner and that sort of thing and it's set up like that for multiple reasons one it provides a a, a cutoff location so that you know in case of a fire or some type of emergency event you know the personnel can come the end of your house where that primary box is is located flip the the panel up there and just hit the breaker and cut off electricity to the entire house uh, and then you know you, they don't have to have access to inside the house so anyway probably enough about that just wanted to uh, to mention that so this thing here says okay it, the sticker in there says if the device is to be mounted onto a solid wall and the neutral is to be bonded, torque the bonding screw prior to putting the box, uh, screwing the box onto the wall. So that's what I did. I screwed it down tight. And so what they're afraid of is, is if you've got that thing on a solid wall and you're trying to screw that, what happens is when you engage that screw, it sticks out of the back of the box. Well, if, if you don't have uh, any play there, then you, you may not be able to get that screw completely engaged because there's something providing that resistance there so just for good measure uh, although in in, the, in my case uh, it probably would have went right through that 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 uh, that plywood just fine but I guess out of paranoia I just left a space that's what that center mounting was is to is to leave the the sides of the box uh, off of the wall about five six a quarter of an inch something like that uh, so that uh, I can have space for that for those that bonding screw to to protrude out the back and and uh, allow it to uh, be fully engaged. So once that's done, then you see here I start running my uh, Romex into the box, and uh, you want to keep this as neat as possible. And uh, you see I'm I'm uh, strapping my my cables down to uh, the wall and again I'm keeping this neat and then that's the exit that uh, two before at the top 
out to the ceiling so I'm um, again drilling holes to keep that neat and keep up with what wires going where so here's a better look inside the box as wires are being run to it uh, you can see all of these breakers here are a single single pole breakers so they're 110 volt circuits a single space obviously uh, it looks like I've got uh, six circuits run and then there's three extra breakers that hadn't had anything run to them yet uh, you'll notice that there is a ground or excuse me a neutral bar on each side and then there's this um, this this strap that connects the two neutral bars together and that's what the white wires are screwed into and then on the far left that is a ground bar and that ground bar is screwed directly into the um, the box so or the the panel itself let me back up the the two neutral bars that I that I just mentioned it is tied into the the neutral lug that's uh, shown on the right hand side again that's that that lug that's got the the green screw right beside it so those two neutral bars are 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 part of that and that uh, the neutral lug there that the the main neutral from the service comes into the ground bar on the left hand side has got uh, the grounds from the circuits and then I've got the uh, rigid conduit grounded and then that that number four bare copper wire you see coming through there is um, uh, actually on a um, is on the conduit that that's actually inside the meter box another shot probably not much more done there just a different angle uh, you can see already with six circuits that uh, you can get you can get crazy with the the wiring and and let it get out of hand so it's an, it's important to from the very beginning to make sure that you've got uh, a real good handle on the routing of your wires and you want that thing to look as neat as possible when you get finished so that uh, when you open up the the box in the future and you're trying to troubleshoot and figure out what's going on uh, with you know a, a circuit you can tell exactly what's run to what without having to look through a spaghetti of wires to figure out uh, uh, you know the the wire that or circuit that you're looking for and here we have with the the, the panel on the uh, box kind of buttoned everything up the circuit that you see down on the bottom right is a 220 circuit so it's taking up two spaces and that's just the way I chose to lay it out was I have all my 220 circuits down at the bottom and my uh, 110 stuff at the top and then last but not least uh, part of your codes is going to require that if you have exposed wire ie Romex in the wall uh, which I did you saw in one of the previous slides that it is covered up and so that's what that piece of uh, plywood between the two studs there's serving as the wall covering and that'll get you uh, that'll get you past codes and you just want to make sure that that runs from floor to ceiling so that you have no exposed Romax uh, below the ceiling and that's it uh, if you have any questions, just leave a comment, and I'll try to clarify anything that I might have left out or wasn't clear about the first time. Thanks.